Hi there, welcome back to my channel. My name is Vera and in today's video, I'm going to be setting up my November bullet journal spreads. I'm also going to be talking about a special campaign that I'm trying to get involved in, so stay tuned for that. Anyway, grab a cup of tea and come and join me as we set up my bullet journal. I've been hyping up my video for a few days on Instagram because of a very special campaign that is being launched right now all over YouTube, and it could not have come at a better time. The campaign is called Team Seas, and if you know Mr. Beast, you'll recognize this familiar hashtag from when he did the Team Trees campaign not so long ago. It's a similar concept, but instead of planting trees, he's aiming to collect 30 million pounds of trash from the ocean. Now, why is this campaign coming at the right time for me? Well, because before hearing about it, I had decided to go to the Azores to become a scuba dive master, and because of that, my theme for November is the ocean. These three things are totally separate, and yet they are all focusing on one topic, the ocean. So I thought that was pretty damn cool. While you're sitting back watching me paint my cover page for this month, let's talk more about this campaign. Team Seas is focusing on cleaning up trash from our oceans, rivers, and beaches. And for every dollar they raise, one pound of trash will be collected. The campaign is running from right now, the 29th of October, 2021, all the way to the 1st of January, 2022. 100% of the money raised will go to the Ocean Conservancy and the Ocean Cleanup. Ocean Conservancy's mission is to protect the ocean from today's greatest global challenges. They create science-based solutions for a healthy ocean and the wildlife and communities that depend on And the Ocean Cleanup is a non-profit organization that is developing and scaling technologies to rid the world's oceans of plastics. Because my channel is small, I can't link to the YouTube fundraiser, so click on the link in the description to do that after this video. This is a really cool cause, and if you can't donate, then I encourage you to share this campaign around your community. A few facts about plastic pollution while we're on the topic. I respect the need for shocking facts to incentivize people to care for our ocean, but there's only so many times I can hear people talking about plastic straws hurting turtles before I go crazy. While single-use plastic is a very big contributor to ocean pollution, it is not the biggest one. The biggest contributor in terms of mass is actually ghost gear. And what is ghost gear, you may ask? Ghost gear is abandoned, lost, or otherwise discarded fishing gear. And unlike single-use plastic, it is specifically designed to capture and kill aquatic lives making it that much more deadly than single-use plastic. Did you know that up to 32,770 tons of plastic waste from fishing and aquaculture enters the European seas every single year? If you take that to a global scale, we're looking at some 1.14 million tons of fishing nets entering our waterways on an annual basis. Cleaning up plastic trash in the ocean is great, but have you heard the expression, if your bath was overflowing, you would turn off the tap instead of reaching for a mop? Well, the same can be said about ghost gear and plastic pollution. We need stronger incentives and technological advances to prevent these pollutants entering our waterways in the first place. And did you know that 46% of the garbage patch is actually made up of ghost nets? That's a huge proportion of pollution coming from one source, commercial fishing. So while we need those incentives to stop plastic entering our waterways, we also need to tackle the plastic already in the ocean. This is why I think Team Seas is an amazing cause. If you want to learn more about Ghost Gear, by the way, you can check out ghostnetwork.org. And to learn more about Team Seas, check out teamseas.org. Thank you for bearing with me as I spoke about Team Seas and Ghost Network. Now let's get back into my November plan with me and let me talk you through my whole process. You just saw me paint out my first cover page and I painted out the sky, then the water, then using a thinner brush I used that to paint out the strokes to give it that water effect. This was actually my second or third time trying to paint out water so it's not my favorite one and as I continue through the process this month I do actually get better. This is the next page that I'm doing and it's actually my quote page because I thought that the left side of the page was a bit blank and I wanted to add in something extra. <laughs> Let me take you through my process of drawing water. The first thing I did was to paint a uniform dark blue background. Once I painted that down, I used my reference photo, this one here on the left, to paint out the shadows of the waves. I used a thinner paintbrush to kind of get that effect and laid down some lines so you could see the curves of the wave. Once I had gotten the overall look and feel of my wave, I went in again with the same thinner brush 
and I tried to add a few more details to the darker shadows because I don't want them to just be singular lines across my page because otherwise that doesn't look very water-like. I added in thinner lines next to the already built up dark lines so that I would kind of get a more of a shadowy effect and more flowy water effect. Right now it might not look like anything in particular but that's because I'm still doing the shadows and I haven't yet added in the highlights to bring out the water look. The next step of the water process is going in with the highlighted colors. With the same brush I mixed in white into my blue paint to make it lighter. When I was ready to apply it to the painting, I made sure to consolidate the highlighted parts of the paint on the top of the shadowed parts, meaning that the lines are dark on the bottom and light on the top. When I'm painting, I also make sure to include a depth effect. The strokes at the back of the painting are thinner and shorter than the strokes in the front of the painting to give it that further away look when you're looking to the right side of the painting. I applied the white strokes or the lighter strokes to the center of the wave because as you can see in my reference photo, the light hits kind of the middle of the blue surface water area. And so I consolidated most of the white in this area, which is also why you don't see a lot of black when I was painting it there. And once that was done, it was time to go in with a different color. So as you can see on this reference photo, the color of the reflections on the water are the color of the sky. So a kind of orangey pink and purple. I mixed in some white with some orange and some pink and I did the same technique but putting less of a highlight on my water with these colours to bring out the sunset effect. I'm no expert in painting water but I would say that maybe the more strokes of highlights and shadows the better because if you compare the painting on the left to the painting on the right, the painting on the left looks a little bit more realistic because I've added in more strokes so it looks more realistic I suppose. And of course this process does take a long time. This painting it took me about one hour I think, meaning that obviously these speeds are sped up and it's just it takes time and patience because you're not gonna do it in 15 minutes and the times that I did try to do it in 15 minutes it ended up not looking like water at all. <laughs> And to finish off this water effect, I went in with a pure white and added in some little fine dots across the highlighted sections to kind of give it this water spraying effect and bring out the, the real look of water. And I hope that's what translates when you're looking at this picture. Very quick tape removal video to ease the soul because it's so satisfying. The quote I chose was, take me to the ocean where I feel alive. And I don't know if this is a quote or if I've kind of made it up. I'm sure I've heard it somewhere before, but I just feel a lot happier when I'm in water. So this made sense to write. The first step for this next painting is to mix in my colours and so I go in with the blue, mix in a bit of black and a bit of white to kind of get a more darker grey blue for the water base and then I'm just going to spread it across my page. With the first stroke of paint you saw it was still kind of dry because I had too much paint and not enough water so I added in some water and I do have a spray bottle on the side to keep my paints wet but otherwise I just go in with a wet brush. Uh, I dip it in the water and then I go back into the paint and then kind of mix it together so it's more of a jelly consistency and then go back onto my page and this is how it looks. As you can see, the bottom of the reference photo is darker because of the shadows, so I help my process along by already darkening some of the blue that's on the bottom 
part of my painting. After doing that, I realized that the top middle section of the water is also slightly lighter so I do add in a little bit of white to lighten up that top part of the water but this is not necessarily the most important thing because eventually I'm just going to use the highlighting technique that I used in my previous painting to lighten this section up. I also remembered too late that usually you paint the sky before you paint the water. There's a rule about that, like you paint the furthest thing away first. So I painted the sky after the water but that's fine, I mean I'm still at the beginning of the process. This is my very first attempt at actually drawing or painting clouds. I've never tried to paint clouds before and they kind of end up looking like some sort of volcano instead of clouds, which is a little bit disappointing, but that's fine. I'll get the hang of the process. And if you have any tips on how to paint clouds properly, please leave me a comment down below because I really like to continue learning. Anyway, my process to paint the cloud was to go for a base color first where I used a stippling technique to kind of get that cloudy effect, which I don't think particularly worked very well in my favor, but that's all right. I started with a base color, then I went in with a darker gray to give it that 3D effect, and then I went in with a lighter color to give it the highlights. I go back and forth between the dark and the light so that I'm sure that I have the different depth perceptions on the cloud, and because this picture it has sunset reflex. I went in with an orange on the highlighted side to give it more of a sunset orange highlight. I must have played around with the clouds for far too long because it started look getting annoying and started looking weird so I was just like you know what this is a good first try I will continue doing this some other day and I left it like that. The next step in my process is to draw the little lines of the shadows of water. First I look at my reference photo and I identify where the curves of the waves are in the photo and then I start drawing on my black shadows to give it that curved effect so it has that texture of water. Now as I mentioned before it's better to have more strokes than not enough and that's what I do here so you can see this different angle where I'm adding in, in the strokes of black or darker grey blue paint to give it that water effect. With the water I have to make my strokes thinner and smaller the further they go back into the page because again the depth effect and I try and make these clear distinctions between the waves or the different levels of waves throughout the painting. I'm always bearing in mind my reference photo to make sure that I'm placing my shadows and highlights at the right spot because if I don't pay attention to where they're supposed to go then sometimes the painting can look a little bit off in perspective and angles. And of course I want it to look relatively real, so I have to keep this in mind. Once I finished placing the first layers of my shadows, I then go in with a lighter colour to start adding in the highlights to the waves. I place the highlights above the first black strokes and skipping every two of the shadows so that I have specifically a highlighted effect because the aim here is not to over highlight the water. I play around with the highlights and the shadows by going in with a dark shadow and then going back in with a light to highlight at different times and then once I'm satisfied with the amount of highlights and shadows I move on to my next step. And my next step is to add in the sparkling effect of water by using a white paint. And I do that by dotting the white paint across the different highlighted sections. And because the sun ray kind of impression is diagonally across the painting, I focus my highlights and my white bright spots in this area. As I mentioned, this has kind of a sunset effect, meaning that there was a bit of orange hitting the clouds, so it only makes sense for there to be orange hitting the water. It's not as prominent as my other painting, but I think it looks good all the same.
After removing the washi tape, I go in with a ruler to trace out my monthly overview and sadly I'm not satisfied with how it looks so I actually go in again by cutting out a piece of paper from my journal and sticking it over the existing monthly overview and redoing it. I redo it by just tracing one line instead of separating the boxes because I feel like it's a very busy page with my painting on the left so having the singular line makes it slightly more easy on the eyes. I also go in with a blue Crayola super tip to circle and highlight the number so that I know where exactly I am in the month. Now my next painting is supposed to be water crashing onto the beach and it's supposed to be an aerial view except for this is the very first time I've ever tried doing this and I have no idea what technique you're supposed to use to give it that effect so I think it just kind of looks a little bit messy from far away though it does kind of look like the right image but up close it's a complete and total mess so let me walk you through the process that I used and of course if you know how to do this properly please do not hesitate to let me know how to do it in the comments down below so the first thing I did was to paint on the ocean and then the sand and I started with a darker color on the bottom of the page to go into lighter colors to go into the color of the sand. The mistake I made was not washing my brush when I decided to go in with the sand color. I actually think I decided a bit too late that I was going to turn into this so that's why Sardom of My Sand kind of has a blue tint to it instead of looking like that crisp white or kind of yellowy sand or cream colored sand so that was one of my mistakes the next thing i needed to do was add the white for the white water that you see when the waves crash onto the sand and i first started by just adding some white with my paintbrush and then trying to drag it out using this kind of effect that you see on the surface of water with like kind of like weird patterns except for it was looking really really bad so i had another idea and i decided to dilute the white uh, dilute the blue paint completely and then add in the white at the top so it kind of had this watery effect that floated down towards the water on the bottom of the page and whilst this is dry and it looks okay it's definitely not my best work and up close I don't think it looks like water at all so again if you have any tips let me know I tried playing with the dark water and the light water to try and blend the colors in together to give it that water effect and it kind of succeeded kind of didn't but at least I tried and this time lapse is kind of cool to see the whole process but yeah that's basically what it looks like I'm not sure if I even mentioned this but this spread is my habit tracker and if you've been watching my previous plan with me's for each of the months you'll know that my habit tracker is broken down into two separate parts the first is a graph where I track my steps and my screen time so I do this by creating the graph so the x-axis is the number of days and the y-axis is the number of steps so in the thousands or the number of hours more recently I've been kind of forgetting about my habit trackers and not tracking that much so instead of tracking eight habits for the month of November I've decided to track three and I do this by creating three boxes on the left side of the page that I leave blank and when it's time to fill in that habit I will just use a Crayola super tip to circle in or to color in this square for the day of the week that I've done the habit. The three habits that I'm tracking are flossing, reading and journaling. Then to finish off this page, I go in with a pen to write habit tracker on the top right of my page. This next spread is my finance tracker, and usually I write finances somewhere on the page, but this time I've decided to completely omit the word finance because I know exactly what this spread is supposed to look like. And this spread is going to be different because I'm going to paint a kind of aerial view of close-up water that has that is kind of crashing around so you see the white sprays of the water and to do this first of all I'm going to 
mix in some black and blue and a bit of white to get a darker blue color and I'm going to paint this on specific sides of my page to have a distinction between the dark water and the light water so deep water and shallow water and then I'm going to add white to my page to kind of give it the lighter effect. The next step is to go in with a thinner paintbrush and to trace out these little white lines that kind of form weird shapes. None of it is round, it's all very pointy and jagged because it's water and nothing is very perfect shaped so you've got to make it quite messy. I go back and forth on specific white strokes to make them lighter or whiter, to add more colour, to add more depth and I think it looks pretty cool. After adding as much white as I thought necessary, I remove the washi tape and I trace out my lines for my finance tracker and of course it's the same every single month. It's divided into five columns, the date, the item, the category, the cost and a small tick to tell myself whether I have counted it in my monthly finances. My next spread is my one line a day and gratitude log and I chose to do it on one and a half pages instead of two pages like normal because when I'm writing what I'm grateful for I don't usually write in big sentences I just write one or two words so it only makes sense to consolidate it onto half of a page. The painting that I'm doing is a painting of a wave. This is probably maybe the third time I've tried painting a wave seriously and I'm pretty happy with how it turns out. So I was inspired by this photo here and the first thing I do is to paint the sky and I've gone for a light blue colour that I bring all the way down that turns into this kind of mountain so I darken the blue a little bit and in the foreground of the background <laughs> you can see that there are these pine trees I guess they are and so I just paint these black pine trees in the background and I realized a little bit too late that I didn't paint the sky far enough to the right so I'm gonna have to do some messing around to bring it it'll drag it to the water and it kind of looks a bit weird but at least I can fix it up a little bit later when I'm fully painting my wave. For the waves, there are two waves, one in the foreground of the image and one in kind of the background of the image. So I draw both of the curves to demonstrate where the waves are going to be, and then I'm going to start detailing the waves in just a bit. As I said earlier, there's kind of a golden rule when you're painting with acrylics, and it's to always paint the thing that's furthest away in the picture first. That way you can go over it or correct things uh, afterwards by painting in the foreground. So I start with the second wave in the background. To do that, I darken the center of the wave, which is kind of in the shadow side first. And when I'm darkening the shadow side, I remember to use very thin, short strokes to create that wave and water effect. And then I use a lighter color, as I've been doing all throughout this theme, to add in the highlights of that wave. I also go in with a very bright white to show you the the crashing of the wave, so when the water sprays in, into the air and it, it forms this white kind of foam, and that is the background. I also kind of show this spraying of water in the background because it's not just uh, foamy at the top, it sprays behind as well. So I'm using this kind of white wash to demonstrate where the water is going after the wave is crashing by itself. Then I'm repeating this exact process with the first wave but giving it more detail because it's the closest one we can see and I darken the shadowy parts and lighten the highlighted parts of course with the same techniques as I mentioned that I've been using this whole time for this theme. Of course, I also go in with some white to bring out those white water spraying and foamy looks at the top of the waves. I use a bit of whitewash to give it that effect that the wave and the water is some of it's being sprayed behind the wave. And then to finish off this painting, I actually go in with some white like I did in my previous painting and give it this kind of not marbly effect but also kind of a marbly effect to show that the water is not uniform and kind of just moving around everywhere. I'm not entirely convinced that this was a good idea but I think it's not too bad. 
Then after removing my washi tape, I write one line a day on the left and gratitude on the page with the wave. I write 1 to 30 on the side down the page. And that is the one line a day and gratitude log done. It is now time for my favorite part of any plan with me video, the flip through. So here we have my cover page and my quote page, my monthly log, which I think looks amazing, my habit tracker, my finance page, and of course my one line a day and gratitude log. You can find my weekly spreads in another video coming very soon. And if you've made it this far into the video, leave me a little wave emoji in the comments and I will see you in the next video. Bye!